Hello, welcome back. Uh, in this last installment on consumer credits, we're going to talk about how to establish credit, improve your credit score, and what to do if you actually end up uh, not being able to pay your bills. As you know, credit is valuable and important, and that's why we want uh, to know how to establish our credit and improve our credit. So what lenders basically look for is pretty common sense. Um, they, when you apply for a loan, a lender typically wants to know your income and expenses. So we already did that when we developed our statement of cash flow. They also want to know what you have, uh, assets and liabilities. So your statement of financial position, remember that we, that's also called the statement of net worth. So that will help you and the lender determine your ability to uh, take on a loan. Your credit history. So you can start with opening um, up op uh, open credit account. So those will be your a phone bill. So it's uh, a cell phone contract, uh, utility account, um, a rental contract. So uh, when you rent an apartment, if your name is on the lease, even if you have co-signer, that still help establish your credit. Um, credit cards, again, uh, make sure you understand the term in the next, in another chapter, we're going to go over how to manage your credit card and the details about, uh, what are some of the terms that you want to watch out for. Remember that it takes time to build a credit history. So start early and go slowly. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank at Philadelphia actually uh, uh, have a good article that gives you suggestions on how to establish credit. Um, we will provide the link in this um, video as well. Once you have established your credit, you can then work on improving, improving your credit score. Um, some of the things are things that we already mentioned. Make sure that you monitor your credit report, obtain your uh, copies of your credit report on a regular basis and verify the information. Um, obviously pay your bills on time and that goes back to budgeting, right? If we have a good budget, you will know what your income and expenses are and they'll enable you to pay your bills on time. And we'll also talk about how do we use the budget to help you determine how much loan you need to take out if you cannot pay your bill on time give your, given your current circumstances. Uh, the other way to improve your credit score is to have a diverse set of different types of account. So for example, have a phone contract in your name, uh, have a utility account in your name. Um, when you are just starting, um, you may not be able to get a credit card, then you can start with a store credit card. So this will be store. Uh, so uh, there may be uh, some common ones are um, department store, uh, such as Coles, Macy, uh, or even um, home improvement stores like Lowe's, Home Depot. Those are good, uh, good places to start, but be sure that you pay off the balance each month. Once you have a store credit card, then you can get a general credit card. So this is your Visa card or MasterCard. And once again, try to pay off the, ba the balance each month. Uh, even if you cannot make pay off the full balance, pay at least the minimum balance. However, know that if you pay the minimum balance, you will have to pay interest on the unpaid balance and your balance will continue to grow even if you don't make any additional purchases. Until you pay off the entire balance, your balance will continue to increase because of the interest charges. Now that you have established credit and know ways to improve your credit, it's important to also know how to protect your credit. So the uh, first uh, danger for credit uh, for uh, your credit is from identity th thieves, and um, some of them, the technique you may not be aware of. Um, for example, uh, they may actually try to read the number of your credit card in public. Uh, so a lot of you may know that when you are putting in your uh, pin into uh, the purchases, make sure that no one can watch over your shoulder and see your pin. Uh, the same thing is true for credit card number. Uh, 
when you throw away your trash, uh, be mindful that there are actually thieves that go around and go through trash to find personal information. So it's important for you to discard your those sensitive documents in a careful way. So either cut them up in pieces, use a shredder, uh, all those are important things. Uh, skimming is can be either done by a store employee or they can also be uh, done by a professional th thieves. If there's such a thing as professional thieves, uh, they can put a fake device on top of a valid um, store machine. And this can happen anywhere in a gas station and a uh, grocery store. Uh, and you sometimes it's difficult to detect. So you have to pay attention. Uh, sometimes you just want to wiggle the machine, make sure that it's securely attached um, before you used it. Uh, pretexting is uh, and phishing. Uh, so these are uh, using email tricks or they pretend to be an employee or an email from a legitimate source. But in fact, what they're trying to get it to do is to get your personal information. So now that you know the tactics used by identity thieves, you are in a better position to protect yourself. So first is to make sure that you remove all personal information uh, from your house. So don't use, your, don't have anything that contain your social security number, uh, document all your accounts um, that um, use a shredder. Again, do not have any, uh, anything that contains social security number anywhere. Uh, when you shop online, be careful, make sure that is a secure site. Um, do not give out any personal information over the phone. You can always um, ask to go to the website directly, uh, or if it's a, you can also um, go to the bank personally and interact in person. So again, um, another another thing that um, identity thieves sometimes do is they go to mailboxes and steal things from the mailbox um, because that may contain checks and other personal information. So you can drop off those mail directly at the post office. Uh, review your bank statements and credit card statements. Again, use the online feature. Um, if you're going away on vacation, make sure that the mail is held. Uh, some of these are common sense. Um, Use virus protection software to avoid being hacked. Uh, once again, if you uh, get email, don't click on the link. Um, personally, I always go directly to a bank. So I may have a notification from a bank uh, and I will, instead of clicking on the link that is sent in the email notification, I just go to the bank website directly. Uh, we've already mentioned this, self-transaction notification on your bank and credit card. So what do you do if you do end up either becoming a victim or if you simply find billing error? So with credit card, you can actually, uh, you have rights. Remember we talked about the uh, Credit Protection Act. So you can, you, you do have to pay the bill, but you can pay the bill excluding the part that you're disputing. So let's say your bill is $250. Now of that, a $50 charge is in dispute, you pay the remaining $200. Um, your credit card company must respond within 30 days. So again, this is um, this is um, the protection that you don't get with a debit card. Uh, notice that even though it says 30 days, because the billing period, it can overlap each other, uh, it may take more than 30 days, but the law requires them to respond within 90 days. Another is that the when you are negotiating a dispute, uh, a credit card company cannot threaten about your credit rating. So again, if you dispute a bill, they cannot say, oh, this is going to lower your credit rating if you dispute a bill. That's absolutely not true. Uh, they also cannot take action to collect the amount until your complaint has been settled. Now, if they think the bill is correct and they provide evidence why they think it's correct, then you do have to pay your bill. Um, you, and this is another protection offered by credit card companies. This is, let's say if you have, um, even if the 
store does not honor your request, but if you have make a sincere effort or you have literally take the item back to the store, uh, you can ask the credit card company to stop payment. Once again, that cannot affect your credit rating. And if the worst happen, even though you're careful, you still become a the victim of identity theft, what can you do? Uh, first, foremost, contact the credit bureau. So tell them to that you have to put a fraud alert, alert saying that um, that so what that means is that they will have to contact you and get your permission before they can open any new account. So you freeze anyone from open, opening up new credit card in your name and putting fraudulent charges on them. Uh, you want to contact the creditors, uh, any ones that have accounts that have been uh, wrong charges has been uh, posted. Uh, so alert them right away. Uh, in addition to um, calling them, make sure that you follow up in writing so you have a record of the correspondence. And most important, file a police report and keep a copy of the police report so that in the, when there is a dispute in the future, you have a record of the correspondence that you write to them. You also have a police report to back up your claim. But what happens if you try your best and things still get out of hand, um, particularly if things un beyond your control happen, such as um, a medical um, emergency or a long-term illness. So first and foremost, be aware of company and services that offer um, debt reduction, but they charge you money upfront. Um, there are a lot of financial counseling services. Most of them are provided by nonprofit and the counseling is free. However, they don't reach out to consumers. So you have to find them. So uh, there are a couple of examples. You may want to look them up if you have need for counseling. Uh, one is the Financial Counseling Association of America. The other is Consumer Credit Counseling Services. Again, be careful when you search for them. You'll probably end up getting advertisements from uh, companies that have very similar names, uh, but they are not the actual nonprofit. One thing that you'll notice is that from this uh, legitimate financial counseling services, they will emphasize education and budgeting. So they will not just say, uh, pay us and we'll fix your problem. They'll say, first of all, you have to work with us to look at your budget. You have to work with us to uh, take certain financial education courses before they talk about how to restructure your debt. Uh, you can negotiate directly with a lender for a uh, debt repayment plan. So you can negotiate a lower monthly payment, but longer terms. Uh, some financial counseling services will actually take on that um, role as well, and they'll charge a fee to cover the administrative costs. But it's not, it's very different than charging an upfront fee. If that still doesn't work, um, one final option is to declare bankruptcy. Um, first of all, understand that what are, what debts will be removed and what will not be removed in a bankruptcy because some debts are exempt. Uh, of course, bankruptcy should be the very last res resort because it does damage your credit rating for up to 10 years. The other thing to know is that bankruptcy is not free. It actually can be quite expensive. Uh, for a lot of Americas, medical bills are the number one reason for filing for bankruptcy. There are two types of bankruptcy. One is a Chapter 7 bankruptcy and one is a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. We'll talk about uh, those two. Um, so understand that when you file for bankruptcy, the creditors stand in line in terms of who gets paid first and who gets paid last. So this depend these are considered the type of claims. So priority claims are taxes and also the cost of the bankruptcy itself. Uh, the second people in line are the secure claims. So the, if the mortgage company uh, is in line, is the next in line, and the auto loan company will be the next in line, uh, what they are able to do is they will be able to sell off the secure asset and then get claim, reclaim for their loan. And if that is not enough, meaning that the value of your house is not sufficient to pay off the loan, or the value of your car is not sufficient to pay off the loan, then they'll also be in line to get the remaining mainly a part of their loan. And then there's unsecured claims. So this will be the credit card or medical debt. Um, so 
All the claims are paid in order of seniority, so priority claims get paid first, followed by secure claim, and so on. Chapter 7, bankruptcy, are uh, available to um, the following um, individuals. So not everyone qualifies for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. First of all, your current income has to be less than the state med median. And if you are your income is greater than the state median, then you have to pass a means test, and they vary from state to state. So you have to file a uh, submit a petition. Um, so again, in that, you have to list all your properties and debt. So that will be your statement of net worth, and you have to pay the fee. Uh, chapter 7 bankruptcy are the most common. 70% of people filing bankruptcy are filed under Chapter 7. Some assets are exempt means that you don't really lose everything. Unfortunately, the exemption varies state by state. So, uh, for example, many states will allow uh, the filer, the bankruptcy filer, to keep a car up to a certain value because that is important for them to keep a job. Uh, you are not protected against foreclosure, which means that you will likely lose your house in the case of bankruptcy. Uh, the court will appoint a trustee to oversee the liquidation of asset, meaning the, the court appointed trustees will see to how things will get sold, which of your property will get sold. And then also some uh, debts are exempt. Those are non-dischargeable. This means that this exempt debt, you will continue to have to pay. Uh, the examples include tax, student loans, um, fines or penalties directly with the IRS or with a government agency, child support, alimony. Uh, so those are, you'd want to do some investigation to find out whether or not um, the debts that you are struggling with are exempt. You, here's a history of uh, Chapter 7 bankruptcy statistics. Uh, interestingly, um, the bankruptcy actually went down during 2020 and 2021, and that is because there is a moratorium on foreclosure and debt collection. So um, this is still, the, the economy is still recovering from the financial crisis in 2012. So it steadily decreased as the economy is doing well. And then it dropped significantly during the current uh, COVID crisis because uh, all foreclosure and um, collection uh, process are, dis are suspended during that time, as well as uh, student loan payments. Uh, another type of bankruptcy is Chapter 13 bankruptcy. For someone to file 13, uh, Chapter 13 bankruptcy, they must have regular income. Uh, they can f stop the foreclosure proceedings without losing your house. Um, however, you must still continue to make mortgage payment. Uh, so the main difference between Chapter 13 and Chapter 7 is whether or not you can keep your house. And you can really only uh, keep your house and file Chapter 13 if you continue to have income and continue to make your mortgage payment. Uh, it's the same thing. You have to submit a petition that lists properties and debt as well as income and expenses. So once again, your financial statement that you created. You have to go through um, credit counseling and you have to file a debt repayment plan. Uh, so in Chapter 13 bankruptcy, you are not discharging your debt, you are making a repayment. So the debt repayment plan is based on your ability to repay. Uh, so it takes, uh, it takes into account your income and your essential expenses and figure out how you can pay. So disposable income is defined as income minus reasonable expenses. Uh, so repayment plan can be made for three to five years years. So if a repayment plan that um, is not sufficient, then that person does not qualify for Chapter 13 bankruptcy. So if you have a lot of credit card debt, uh, those will be discharged after the repayment period. So people who have regular income and somewhat high income uh, or high, above median income, uh, they may want to consider a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Uh, similar to the statistics from Chapter uh, 7 bankruptcy, you'll notice that the amount of bankruptcy filing went down and dropped significantly since COVID, once again, because of the moratorium on foreclosure. 
To wrap up our module on consumer credit, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So um, budgeting and planning, that's the key to maintain a good credit and also a peace of mind. We conclude the chapter on consumer credits here. I'll see you again soon.